And now what we want to do is, that's great talking about the trends, but let's see it. And with DevNet, we have a see it, learn it, code it approach. And I would like to invite up Mandy Whaley and Ashutosh Malagunkar to show some innovations that we have in making it real. Thank you. Great, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Hey, Mandy. So the new network helps us create new experiences and deliver new outcomes. And that's what Ashutosh and I want to share in this see it, learn it, code it section. We want to start with a fairly common situation. A major retailer has stores across Europe. Let's say they're looking at bringing up a new store in Berlin. They also have their data center in Frankfurt. Now we're going to look at bringing up this new store and we know that we want to do it in a repeatable way because we plan to do this very often and we want to do it as efficient and quickly as possible. But there's some requirements that we need to cover. We need that connection from store to the data center. We want to be able to quickly deploy the local network at the store with a very standardized wireless configuration. And then also at the store, we're going to have local um, applications running. And we need to be able to configure the policy for those applications so they can use the data, data center services. And most importantly, we want to do this reliably, repeatedly, and in a way that is scalable. We want every store to be configured in the exact same way. We want to send the minimum of people on site to do that store stand up. And we want to be able to get it up and connected and running as quickly as possible. And that leads us to automation. So I'm happy to share with you this multi-domain automation demo. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the products that we're going to use to make this happen. To connect the store and the data center, we'll use Cisco SD-WAN. We're going to be using ACI to configure the policy for those applications that are running in the store. And we'll use DNA Center to help with the standardized configuration of the wireless network, and also to help manage and deploy the local network. And then we'll be using UCS for the, the applications that are running in the data center and the store. And at the end, what we want is a connected store up and running all of the applications and servers that it needs. So, Let's take a look at how we can do this. We're going to use a couple of additional tools. One of those is called Action Orchestrator, which is a workflow tool. We'll also be using GitHub um, for our single source of truth, and also WebEx Teams to communicate between the two teams that are involved in this standup. And most importantly, we're trying to eliminate copy and paste. No copy and paste from Excel. No copy and paste from Notepad. Don't copy and paste your configs around or your IP addresses. So we're working to move from that single source of truth and do everything in an automated fashion. So we'll switch over to the demo and take a look. <clears throat> All right, so this is Cisco Action Orchestrator. It's a workflow tool where you can build up steps that call APIs, that call custom Python scripts that you've written, that can call pretty much anything you can containerize and plug in. We're going to start this off running. All I need to give it is uh, a name of our store. So I'm going to call it uh, DevNet Zone Berlin, since we're bringing up that Berlin store. And we're going to start it off running. And you'll see that it starts running. Some of the steps turn green. Those have been completed. The blue one is the one that we're actively on. And we also have this WebEx Teams room connected to it. So as steps are completing, we're getting alerts in our WebEx team room. This Teams can see how it's advancing. And we're also getting back configuration information about how those different services are being configured. So we're going to let that run, and we're going to go back to the slides, and I want to talk about some of the APIs that we're actually calling in those workflow steps. So to, we can go back to the slides. So to connect the SD-WAN connectivity, we're going to be using the vManage APIs. We'll use an API call to get a list of devices, and then we're also using templates. Templates let you create a template that has specified ports, protocols, define it, and then attach it to multiple devices. So we'll create a template for our store, and we'll be able to assign that to all of the routers at our store. For DNA Center, we're going to use the Enterprise SSID. This is one of the new intent APIs. And on this one, we pass in some configuration information. One of those would be our store name, which could be used as the SSID name. Things like security level, uh, the passphrase we want to use, if we're enabling Fastlane and different features like that. And this will start off the workflow to stand up this SSID. 
And then for ACI and UCS, for UCS, we're going to use the Python SDK. And we're creating VLANs and then also creating that new tenant in ACI using the ACI SDK as well. And then after those are created, we actually need to get the connectivity going by updating the VNIC templates and then setting up the application profiles and endpoint groups using, again, the ACI SDK. All right, so we're going to check back in on our workflow and see if we've completed. And we have. We've got success. That's always exciting to see in a live demo. And um, you can also see in our WebEx Teams room that we've had everything has finished deploying. And we've got a message with, here's our server. It's ready to be, ready to be used. I did want to dive into um, one example deeper in the workflow. We'll take a look at the DNA Center. So this is the child workflow that's creating that. And I want to look at one specific API call. This is the API call that calls the intent API to stand up the SSID. And you can see, here's the configuration data that we passed in. Here's our new store name that, that we put in in the demo. So everything ran, everything's configured, and now we're ready to start doing interesting things at our store. So we'll go back to the slides. So with this workflow automation, we've got a standard, repeatable, and also self-documenting way to stand up these new stores. We can send very minimum number of people to the store to do the stand up, and they can work easily through, through WebEx Teams with the, with the people back at headquarters. We've accomplished our three goals. We've got our store connected and compute ready. And now Ashutosh would like to share with you some of the kinds of applications you can then run at the store. Thank you, Mandy. So if you can switch to the camera. So how cool is this, right? I mean, this is a live WebEx meeting going on right now. And I am wearing a Google Glass. What, what this is showing is the type of applications that we can actually see in, in, the, in the application space in a store or in the retail space. So Mandy, like, if you can just wave, like, you know, if you are standing there, like, uh, so this is an actual call, right? So this is an actual meeting that's going on and you could be talking to an expert remotely. Now, the, the things that we have done in this is if you can switch to the slides back, is like, you know, we've, see, we've started seeing a lot of augmented reality or hands-free applications in the IoT space. But what we also see is that retail or healthcare is also asking for use cases, especially in healthcare where doctors are doing operations in the OT and they want to actually see what's happening while the operation is going on. So these are some of the use cases where hands-free uh, is needed. Now, I lead a group called Co-Creations in DevNet and we get to work with our partners and strategic partners like Google and one of the projects that we are working on is the Google Glass project, where we have integrated the WebEx Teams into the Google Glass. So what this helps is it really helps the IT engineers, or it could be customers, it could be the store manager. But in this case, like Mandy talked about a store bringing, being uh, brought up. Now, in, on the floor, you could actually have some issues. So let's say that I'm an IT engineer, I, I wear this glass, and I'm able to actually show the problem to the expert who is back uh, in the office. So like, the way this, this thing works is that there is a registration process. Uh, and in, for this, what we've done is we've used the WebEx Teams APIs as well as the security APIs. And the reason the security API is needed is because to make sure that this glass that I have, I'm wearing is actually me. So I'll get a duo multi-factor authentication coming to me. I say yes, and then the glass is mine. So that's the registration process. And the second one is the actual making of a call. So in this case, uh, I, I, what I'll do is, if you can switch back into the video. So here, like I'm just showing you, like if I first tap, uh, it starts setting up the device, and like you bring up a QR code, and at that point, it will start registering the device, and at here, it will say that the registration is successful, the glass is under my name now, and then it will say, like, scan a QR code. Now, think about it that if you're in a uh, data center, 
you could have a serial number and you can actually look at that serial number and know which expert to call immediately. So in this case, like we actually made a call, uh, after the call is made, what you can do is, this is a remote expert who's looking at it, what they can do is also share content back into the glass. So sitting here, if they share a diagram, like in this case, I'm going to show a diagram that shows up, the remote expert is actually showing me a diagram and they're telling me like, okay, this is the problem that you need to fix or change the cable from here to here. So this is the kind of application that you can start working on. So in conclusion, if you can actually switch back to the slides. So in conclusion, right? I mean, one of the things that we are seeing is there's a hands-free experience that we want uh, our customers to start having. The WebEx Teams integration and the Duo integration are pretty key for these kind of applications. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy and Ashutosh.